Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're taking a look at makeup that's coming out soon. I find this information where everyone else finds it on Instagram from Trend Mood, Chic Profile, and Angel Naked. And don't have a lot of release dates, but I do have some pictures and credit to those sites on those names on Instagram for providing those pictures. Let's, uh, let's get started. Tom Ford is up to something. I saw that he's doing these duo blushes, and I think they might be called Shade and Illuminate. There are six shades. I think maybe once a year he comes out with something that's seasonal, but this looks like a, a redo. I own no Tom Ford blushes, so I think I do want to partake. Hard to tell from most of the pictures because they leave the plastic on what the colors really look like because the plastic, you know, there's reflection off of it. But I think I want to try one of those. Apparently he's also doing a powder lipstick and I think powder lipsticks well done. I really like them. I love a matte lip. I do. I love a matte lip. So that is interesting to me as well. And apparently concealer. Now, some of these things, you guys, I don't think they'll ever make it to the United States. Trend Mood, based in the U.S., Angel Naked, I think in Russia, and Chic Profile in the U.K. And they'll oftentimes give dates like, oh, this is in Australia, this is in Germany, this is in Japan, but they don't necessarily know when or if it's coming up in the United States, so I don't know about that. And I don't know that I want to go there. But let me know if you want me to. Then for eyes, the Bitter Peach Collection Quad in Suspicion. Apparently this is repackaging. It's uh, remarketing something or re-promoting something, which I just, I'm not a Tom Ford devotee. I, I, a lot of people do re-promotes, <laughs> promotes, and I just don't know, you know, because Charlotte Tilbury does it a lot. I guess Tom Ford does it a lot, and I'm just not um, up on what they're doing and what they do. I don't think the shadows look that interesting. I do think the packaging looks that interesting. Then there are a couple of other things. Coming out together is Rose Prism and Metallic Denim, I think. They're for holiday. Um, well, actually, we don't know when they're for. Could be September. The one that looks interesting to me, the Rose Prism has a peach, it has a rose. I feel like I've been there. And, you know, who knows? I might put that on my lids and say, this is the perfect peach, the perfect rose. But the metallic denim is kind of more compelling to me. I saw this swatched, however, and it reminded me a lot of Natasha Denona's gold palette, which I don't have. So that's a possibility. That is a high possibility. And this is the wet dry formula, which I've never tried. And I do want to get a little bit into Tom Ford, a little bit more into Tom Ford for you guys. So this is a definite maybe. Then there's something called Cognac Rose, which is in Germany right now. No, it's in Europe right now. I don't know if it will end up coming here. Of course, you know, cosmetic companies sometimes do things very specific to regions, so I don't know. And it looks like they're coming out with singles. I haven't tried to singles. Maybe this is the place where Tom Ford gets a little more bold, because I do look at the quads and think, haven't I seen that before? Isn't that just like something else? And they just seem super, super repetitive. Maybe the singles is taking less risk for them and being more adventurous. There's only two colors that I've seen. I, I love that blue and I love this kind of um, pewtered, it's not quite silver, maybe gunmetal. I, I kind of dig that. We shall see. Moving on to Chanel. So I'm kind of doing this by brand. Chanel only has one thing, the Le Beige Water Fresh Blush. It looks exactly like the Water Fresh tint. I never got that, but Alana Davison did, and she used to use it all the time. She said it was cooling, and she has dry skin, as do I. She loves a bronze look, which I don't. So I think she liked it just because it gave her a little bit of color. There's little beads in there, and as you put this on with your hands, probably with a brush as well, the beads break and there's pigment in them. 
The thing is, I get that when it's all over your face. When it's blush, I think it, it is kind of dangerous, you know, because you just want to keep your blush in one area and something this liquidy that has to be popped, I wonder, you know, are you getting it further than you covering more space? square footage than you need to because you're waiting for these to pop. I'm just, I'm not sure this is something that's interesting to me, but let me know if it's something that many people say, yes, I will give it a try. Bite Beauty. So when Bite Beauty first started, it was all about lip products. The idea was women eat something like 10 pounds of lipstick a year, just chewing on their lips, whatever. I don't know how that works out. And I don't even know if it's true, but the idea behind Bite, is the lips. They were doing lips that were non-toxic. So you could eat 10 pounds of it in a year and it's nothing bad's not going to happen to you. Although the one would say if we actually really do eat 10 pounds of lipstick every day, every week, every year, whew, um, we're still fine. But I digress. Then they kind of redid everything. They took all their lipsticks away. They took their liners away, which is such a shame. I loved their liners and they had nice colors and came out with face products. And I did like their base. I didn't try their powder. And then a couple of lip products here and there. It's kind of like, what is, what is Bite up to? Well, they're back. They're doing a matte. I love the image of this particular color. The colors look a little bit, uh, been there. Lots of berries very neutral palette, some nudes, but I want to see in person because some of my favorite colors are bike colors. In the past, they've kind of gone out there like a persimmon. I have this persimmon color that's an insanely beautiful orange. So I want to see in person, but I love the idea of matte. I love the idea that bike is back doing what they did originally and what they do so nicely. And I'm excited for this one definitely going to pick up a few shades. Hermes is coming out with a highlighter, you guys, and this looks insane. You know how Charlotte Tilbury did the gold bar thing? This actually does look like a gold bar. The embossing is beautiful, and this particular shade, I think, looks really nice. It's not doing what so many brands have been doing lately, where it seems like it's one color in the pan, and then you put it on your face, and it's something else altogether. Just saying that, I realized I don't know if that's true or not because I haven't tried it. I will say this, it doesn't look like it has a blue undertone or pink undertone or something that's gonna surprise you and not look very natural. I am, I'm getting this. I love the blushes. I'm wearing one of them today. I really, wow. I'm wearing a couple of blushes today, I think. And clearly not enough. Anyway, 100% I'm buying this. There's no doubt. I have no idea when it's coming out. September? Fall? But I'm there. Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with a couple of things. She has the Eyes to Mesmerize that apparently just came out. I think it's available in Walk of No Shame and Pillow Talk. And I just feel like she did something kind of pinky two years ago, and she did something kind of coppery. And I... I don't think it's, you know, anything new, anything special, anything I really want to do. So I'm going to pass on that. She also has apparently a 12 pan instant eye coming out soon. We don't know when soon is. And two quads. One is called Celestial Pearl and one is called Cosmic Pearl. Um, it's been said on the interweb that this is a new formula. And the packaging is really pretty. It's like an abalone kind of shell or a uh, mother of pearl. And I and I, I dig that, you know, but it's not about the packaging. The swatches that I saw, every single one of them is a shimmer. Once again, she just refuses to put mattes in her quads. I know that she's had at least one all matte quad. And again, I'm not a devotee, so I could be missing something, but as a hooded person, I do not want reflective stuff right here because it makes the hood stand out and look even bigger. I'm undecided because some of these swatches are very pretty and I could certainly dip into something else and get a matte to help push everything back. 
Let me know what you think. If you want to see one of these, I'll do it. Anastasia Beverly Hills apparently is back. So recently there was another Norvina palette, which I just can't go there. It reminds me so much of the Morphe stuff, which I can't go there either. I don't like those ginormous palettes that are appealing to the eye. I always look at them and think, ooh, and then I think of it. And I think, well, it's pretty much variations of the same color. So you're not really going to get a lot of different looks, especially if you're limited in how you can put on your eyeshadow, which I feel pretty limited because of my hood. And I just was wondering, where is this brand going? Is it going completely Norvina land? Because I think that would be unfortunate. I miss their old palettes. Remember when they used to have really solid, the, was it 12 pan palettes or 16 pan palettes? And now it's the big ones. Anyway, I feel like maybe they're, they're back. It's just they're back in a different way. And I haven't tried these, so I don't know. But three new products. We have bronzers, and the range looks good. Very dark to light. Undertone is everything. So range is one thing. Undertone is quite another thing. I might try it. They also have highlighters and a stick. And these look really amazing. Now, it depends on the pictures that you see. But this one picture, it's like Shine City, and the colors don't look again like something that has green or blue or lavender. They look like they might be more skin tone-ish. So that's a maybe. They also have blushes, and the blushes don't look that interesting to me. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm all for new formulas coming out, but I would love it if people kind of just moved outside of the typical stuff just a little bit. For instance, Hourglass, most of those blushes were yawners, but then there was Loyal and Revel, and I've never seen anything quite like it. Lisa Eldridge's stuff that just came out, I think one or two were kind of like Mountain Walk, we've seen it many times, but the shade that I'm kind of in love with I've never seen anything quite like it, and these shades look like shades I've seen, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really super interested, and I'm also, like everybody else, kind of blushed out right now. However, if I see it in person, I might change my mind, and this is a line again. Let me know if you are interested in anything from this Anastasia release, and if so, what, and I will give it consideration, because if it were up to me, it would be a different story than, you know, I'm doing videos for you to see what things are like so you can decide if they'll work for you. Hourglass. Just did that lip product that I thought was incredibly overpriced, incredibly typical, incredibly small. And then they did those blushes, which I really liked. And now they're doing eyeshadows. So it looks like you buy an empty palette and then you buy the shadows. You pick and choose from their range. I remember when they did those eyeshadow palettes where it was amorphous, kind of everything blended into each other and it was embossed and nobody bought it. I mean, they stayed away in droves. And I do remember somebody say, the shadows themselves are very decent. It's just, this is a concept people can't get next to. So I, I've never tried their shadows. I don't know. I kind of like this idea because I feel like so many palettes aren't giving me exactly what I need. I need a match, you know what I mean? I want a color like this, I want a color like that. And I like that idea. I don't like the idea that the size is kind of odd and I wonder, do I need to buy the palette? Can I just buy a Z palette for 10 bucks somewhere, on Amazon probably, and stick some shades in there? or? Are they just something that's so untypical that you have to buy the palette? And, you know, I wouldn't put it past a company doing that. They are here to make money. So that is interesting to me. And then finally, Dior. So Dior has stuff coming out. It's a little confusing because, for instance, Golden Day, which looks kind of interesting, is only in Germany. How interesting, it's not in all of the EU, but just in Germany. Maybe it's a test run, who knows? Then there is two other quints, and 
I'm just not sure. I've heard people say, well, this is typical. It's not that interesting. And I, I get it. But I think because we're so used to having these bright palettes, these crazy ass palettes, when we see something that actually might be workable on a daily basis, we poo poo it. Maybe. The one with the silver is an absolute no for me. They did a silver last year on a holiday and I have it. I don't need another one. But the one with the gold, maybe. And these look very neutral, like they can work for many skin tones. They also look a little dark. So I'm not sure. That's another one. Let me know if you're interested in either of these quints from Dior. And then they have these luminizers. First of all, I love the packaging. It looks like that soft puffy packaging, which I think is so elegant and a teeny bit retro. There's six shades and apparently these are highlighters, but there's a lot of color to these highlighters and they look like blushes. And I think if you're somebody who likes a shiny blush, <laughs> if you don't like a matte blush, you're not some reflection on your cheeks. Some of these I think you could probably use for blush. I'm kind of interested. I'm kind of interested. So again, this is one where I want you to let me know what your thoughts are. Maybe I will get one, probably not more than one, but we shall see. And then finally, I didn't write it down here on my list. Natasha Denona has a mini palette coming out. So this is unusual for her. After she's hit us over the head with, you know, the Cirque du Soleil palette, which I'm sorry, that's a no for me. And then the Zendo palette, which I just, I didn't get it. This palette, I would think, I would, I would welcome it with no. But when I started to think about it a little bit more, and again, we really need to see some pictures, I think there might be something to this, you guys. I, I know that sounds weird. It may not work. It may not be flattering. But the creative side of me looks at that and thinks, I could have a good play with this. And sometimes, you know, that's what it's all about. And yes, I'm looking for makeup that'll work for me, but sometimes I really want to play. And this palette looks like playtime to me. I think for some people, I mean, what do you mean? It's, it's practically monochromatic. It's just variations of gray all the way to black. But I think maybe there might be something to it. It doesn't have to be colored to be playful. And this might be more wearable I think I'm going to get this one. And that, my friends, is it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me, and please come back again. Until we meet again, be safe, be smart. I am wishing you good luck.